and principal investment manager at uh, Kotak UK now joins us uh, from Singapore. Uh, Nathan, good morning. Uh, so uh, we have seen, uh, you know, FIS selling, uh, uh, of course, coming down. And over the last couple of days, first indications of some kind of buying also uh, tickling in. Uh, uh, do you get a sense that uh, our market could uh, run up from here, even if it's already rallied quite a bit from the lows? Morning, Anuj. I, I think the FI investor has been pruning uh, some exposure to India, but now that pruning is almost done. Uh, so I think the numbers could look uh, much more you know, saner and maybe some inflows can start coming in. But uh, that said, the market has rallied 10% from the lows uh, and we are into the big event of budget. Uh, so I think you know pe uh, markets may take a bit of a breather. But uh, yes, uh, if it were to come down, uh, we will see continued support from domestic investors, but in particular, and maybe finally a bit of a support from even international investors coming back. Nitin, the morning, what's your own view on the Indian markets and what kind of investments it could get in from FI investors over the next, say, uh, three to six months? I think the FI investor has always been positive on India. He just wants a bit more clarity on what is happening post demonetization and in the expectation towards GST. Uh, then there is this you know, change of the treaties which will happen uh, effective uh, March end this year. So I think there is some, you know, uh, some clarity that the international investor is looking at uh, both from an economic growth perspective and from a taxation perspective. Uh, and uh, clearly, as I said, uh, the big overweight that India used to be in many portfolios uh, maybe looks like has been reduced to a certain extent. Uh, so they would look to uh, buy back uh, as, as India starts having more certainty of earnings outcome. I think we were also, uh, we have been positively surprised by the results so far. Uh, you know, it is, it's, it's not as if we have been surprised in one segment of the market. We have been positively surprised in banking, in the private banking space broadly so far. Uh, we have been surprised positively on the consumer discretionary space, you know, uh, which we thought would be hit. We have been surprised positively on, you know, even in cement and now yesterday, microfinance. So I think there are many buckets where we have seen positive surprises in the, uh, in the results season so far. Uh, and if that continues in the course of the year, then at least the you know the earning story that so far so far has been belying us can come back. Okay, uh, Nathan, uh, two pockets uh, which have seen phenomenal rally over the last uh, <coughs> uh, uh, metals. So, what's your uh, view on that? Uh, and NBFCs, which have made a strong comeback. Uh, so on metals, I hope that we are not making the top. Uh, we are reluctant buyers of metal <laughs> stocks as we speak. Uh, so we have been uh, very underweight that space. We missed the entire rally. Uh, so my hope is that we don't make the top. Uh, so uh, the only, uh, I think there's a very strong rally in the metal space. Uh, the earnings estimate clearly will be uh, surpassed because the analysts are, uh, you know, clearly the analysts are significantly behind in their, uh, uh, the numbers on assumptions uh, from where the current metal prices are. Uh, so that space could look, uh, could have some more legs. But as I said, you know, we missed the rally, so I'm not an expert there at all. Uh, and we're just hoping that we are not making the top in that segment. Uh, on NBFCs, uh, our view is more sanguine. I think there has been a very strong rally. Uh, but we see some structural challenges for NBFCs uh, going forward. So we don't think that you know, they will enjoy this similar kind of price multiples that they were enjoying till very recently. So I think there is going to be some moderation in some expectations from our side on NBFC model. Uh, we still prefer the private banking space uh, as compared to NBFCs. Uh, so they've had a decent rally from the bottom, but it should be looked in context of how much did they fall. They fell very sharply. So I think there has been some bounce back, but structurally, as I said, we believe there are some headwinds which are creeping in the models. So you said that uh, you've been positively surprised in banking, cement and NBFCs in this quarter. We haven't got the auto numbers just yet. Only a few of them have come through, you know, li the likes of TVS Motor. And we've seen some surprises there on the upside as well. Um, is this a space that you would yeah. back? I think this is a space that we are invested in a combination of both uh, OEMs and, you know, and auto ancillaries. Uh, more in the auto ancillary that we have overweight in. Uh, so we clearly believe that the auto story is here to stay. Uh, but in this current quarter, we, might, we may see numbers which could be not as good as what the other sectors are so far delivered. Uh, TVS could be exception there. Uh, I think Maruti clearly will be uh, also an exception, but others could see, uh, uh, I think, some headwinds of growth. Uh, and some of those headwinds continue in, in the current month. Uh, that said, you know, the longer term story in autos remain positive. Uh, but as I said, we are more in the auto ancillary space 
uh, in our exposure. And we see no challenge there. In fact, we see possible gains in the replacement market from unorganized to organized shift, uh, which can get, which has got some aid from demonetization, and GST will further you know, aid that shift uh, into organized players. So we are hoping that this uh, process of shift from unorganized to organized continues in the auto ancillary and will benefit us. Okay. Two uh, problem points for market, uh, for Nitin, which of course in the past were the two big uh, legs of bull market, IT and pharma. Uh, your thoughts on, uh, yeah. on this? It's, it's, of course, a lot stock specific, but overall, what's the call? I think the IT space is seeing uh, clearly some headwinds and this bill introduction on the uh, H-1B or L-1, L-2, L-3 uh, minimum salaries or some changes is clearly a headwind. But then there is a possible tailwind also of you know, higher IT budget spending from here on. The U.S. market is the principal you know, supporter of IT budgets for IT companies and we could see some support from there. Uh, you know, I also believe that the state has you know, uh, so far been used to build price corrections or pricing pressures in, in the IT space uh, if there is indeed an uh, issue of U.S. visa related salary hikes which will, for, which will come through we could see you know, some corresponding action on the pricing side, on the positive side. That said, you know, at, at this stage, uh, the pressures are more than the tailwind. Uh, so we will look at more clarity from the U.S. bill, which has been the bill which has been reintroduced, how that will impact IT companies. On the pharma side, I think the pressure continues from both the ends, uh, on the regulatory framework and on generic pricing. Uh, so there is no letting down on that pressure so far. Uh, so I think we will be cautious there. Valuations are in favor. So we are selectively looking at that sector, but not, you know, traditionally we would be very overweight this sector. At this stage, we are just around market rate uh, and more so in the domestic uh, exposure, exposed companies. So we, will, we are closely watching that space because valuation is now looking in both sectors very attractive, mm. but no change in stance. We still remain a bit underweight. Okay, we'll, we'll let you go. Thanks, uh, Nitin, for joining us as always and giving us your view. The market has actually given up some of its